Hastings Grant ELAR. This is Sharon Holbert. She's the high school librarian and our tech wizard. This is Carrie Latham. She's fifth grade. And Julie Parnell, she's first grade. And we basically just want to give you background. Some of you have never sat before. We want you to feel comfortable in the classroom, feel like you're not going in blind. And so, we assume you know the information, and no one's ever told you the information. So that's kind of what we're doing. Right. And, we're, and I'm going to go fast. Please go like this if you have a question, because we, I want you to get the information. I know you can read, but some of us are going to interject. We're not just going to read off the PowerPoint. <laughs> Your job as a sub is so important. We are so grateful that you are here. We rely on you so much. And we, we expect as teachers that you can come into our classroom and we can we don't miss a day of instruction. That's, that's the point of a substitute. We cannot miss a day of instruction. So you're very important. You're here for the students and paramount to everything is their safety. And as a substitute, you should always strive to create an environment that promotes learning. <laughs> Positive, you know, sometimes it's hard to come in and smile, but come in, smile, introduce yourself, make everybody ready to learn. And as a Greenwood employee, you have a responsibility to maintain confidentiality. We can't say that enough, being in a small community. There is a confidentiality waiver that you have to sign, and Mr. Elliott was going to have that this morning. I have not heard back from him. I don't know what happened to it. But you will sign that, and that says you will not compromise any student's personal information ever. These are just classroom basics. You can read them, introduce yourself, don't assume you know who the students are. And I'm gonna let the elementary teachers talk about those babies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very comfortable holding this. But uh, first thing I wanna say is that you don't know when you go in the classroom who your children are. You don't know that the fact that when you walk in, the most positive thing that can happen to them that day is you. you. You don't know that about them. So please remember to smile and be kind and to be loving. Okay, next thing. For little kids, they have little bladders. And if one of the kids asks you to go to the bathroom, let them. Now, I know sometimes when you let one, that breathes and the next one has to go and then the next one has to go. The best thing to do is to stand them all up, light them up, walk out the door, and take the entire class. Then when you come back, you probably won't have that problem. And if you do, you know that that child is telling you one. Okay? And your wife's Yeah, and they'll probably tell you that. Um, if you don't know something, ask. Ask another teacher. Pink folders. All teachers this year are going to have a pink folder that looks like this. Now, right now, there's not anything in it, but this pink folder is what you're going to need to look for. The, uh, we're going, the teachers are tomorrow, and they're going to be given these folders. This should be somewhere visible in their room with sub plans, discipline slips, nursery referrals, emergency lesson plan. Any notes that you might need that I know some of you asked earlier about uh, medical issues and who takes medicine and when, who goes to the study shack and when, no who needs to, the no-fly list if you're in older grades. The, all of those things should be in this pink folder and the teachers will be told to leave those pink folders visible. If you can't find the pink folder, please ask someone, the teacher next door, that usually, you know, it's a team teacher, the teacher on the same team, the teacher in the same grade level. Somebody should know where this pink folder is in the grade level, the, the neighbor teacher, or those kinds of things. But this way, if everybody in the district has this, every teacher will be given this, this is what you'll look for when you go into their room as far as sub notes, plans, anything that might come up that you might need. And if you if something comes up that's not in this folder, please ask. Uh, find someone next door, across the hallway, those kinds of things, because they can usually answer those kinds of questions. We're talking about active Oh. Okay. Talk about lesson plans and all that. Um, 
please be. Oh. Um, make sure you, and, that, and that's why it's important to show up a few minutes early. Don't rush in the door right when your class begins because you might not have room sheets. You might not have the lesson plans. Somebody might have given them to somebody else to give them to somebody else to give them to you, and you don't know where they are. So you need to be there at least 15 minutes before your assignment. And because of the crazy schedule this year, that's why we left it at 15 minutes before your first assignment begins. Some of you in the high school, you might not have the class until third period or fourth period, but you know you need to make sure what time you're supposed to be here and be there at least 15 minutes. Um, we don't want you sending kids to the office to make copies. That's why you need to be there before. Kids should not be making copies in the office. You need to take care of that kind of stuff, that housekeeping stuff. And you know, it, there are times when teachers call in because their baby gets sick and they have to leave and they leave you with nothing. So, and, and you have to come up here to rush and, and that's a different story. But for the most part, they need to leave you something. You should not have to start your day with a blank slate. Nobody should have to do that. It's hard enough to do your job as it is, much less coming in with no roll sheets, no seating charts, no <coughs> lesson plans. So and if that does happen, happen, let somebody know and we will, you know, find a, a, a co-teacher or something and we will, we will take care of that for you because you, your job is tough enough. You don't need that also. Um, but the other thing is actively monitor your classrooms. You guys have to be up and moving. You're going to find that when you're up and moving and making eye contact and engaging with those students, they're going to engage with you. Some of you might not want them to, but anyway, sometimes you don't want to talk. But they need to know that you care that you're not there as a babysitter. But they need to know that, that, that you care what they're doing in that day. And if you come in and you sit down and you take role, and those are the only words you say to them that whole period, that's really not what we need you to do. We need you, again, not lose an instructional day. And, and it is, you'll, you'll be tired if you're up and monitoring the whole day and you're up and, and helping those kids. We don't expect you to know that material. I, don't, I wouldn't know algebra. I wouldn't, you know, I haven't done that in 30 years. But you can learn with them. And if you don't if you don't know the answer, tell them I don't know the answer, but let's figure it out. So we really it's really important that you and I'm not saying walk every single desk forty five times in the class period, but don't just sit there at the desk on your phone. That's really what we're asking. Okay? Um it's um, the other thing is it's we really need you to follow the lesson plans um, because our teachers have set curriculums and they're trying to get through set material in a given time period and it's usually a time crunch and if you guys choose oh and, and the kids the kids are trying to talk into it oh we don't have to do that we already did that they do that a lot too we already did that we don't have to do that we did that yesterday follow the lesson plans there's a reason usually why the teacher left it exactly like that if we don't cover that material, then when the teacher comes back, the teacher has to recover that material. So not only do we lose one instructional day on, on when that teacher's out, but we lose two. And that gets really, as many activities, especially at the high school that go on, instructional time is very important. And we, we lit, move, miss a lot of it anyway, so we really need you guys to follow the lesson plans. Unless, emergencies come up. Things get lost, papers get lost. We know that happens, but as much as you can, please follow the lesson plans. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Question. And especially, yes. One, one of the things I found the most common is not that a lesson plan has its own left, but that, with the question of middle school and high school where I mostly serve, is that since the students will say, yeah, we've already done that assignment, and I'll see that that assignment has already been in the stack somewhere, it's been done. They were at, they're, 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 the hardest problem that I have with lesson plans is there's a, especially if there's a multiple day absence on part of a teacher, they don't leave nearly enough material. Yeah. Yes, I and we're, you know, and we know that there's a few teachers. We were hoping there was supposed to be two day in service. One day was supposed to be for the subs. One day was supposed to be for the teachers, <coughs> and it didn't happen. <coughs> one of the things that we're going to tell you about, and I'm going to give you some websites, is you need to have a bag of tricks. You as a sub, and we've all subbed, all of us, that's why we're doing this. You've got to have a bag of tricks. You've got to take, you've got to take responsibility 
to say, I'm not going to walk into this classroom and do nothing and let these kids walk all, all, all over me. You're going to have some brain games and, you know, read a book to them, with them, that kind of stuff. But that comes later. Yes, Cindy. and they've got some great, uh, do that. Did you already go to the next one? Yeah. Okay, now we'll get to that in a minute, but we want to go over this first. Please don't rearrange or remove things from cabinets, drawers, or stations. That is a big thing. <laughs> if there's not directions left to play a game, please don't get a game out. If there's not directions for a puzzle, please don't get a puzzle out. Some of, some of us spend a lot of time you know, getting our classrooms just so when we come back and desks are moved and things, it's it's very frustrating. Do you have a question? Oh, okay. So, this <laughs> is the last thing. <laughs> yeah, just, just, I mean, some teachers will say make yourself at home, but some really don't want you to make yourself at home. <laughs> and, and students shouldn't do that either. Don't let the kids say, oh, I know where the pencils are. You know, they can point it out to you, but don't let kids of any age rummage through your desk or anybody else's especially stuff. Especially at the high school. Or at the library. Or at the library. Yeah, especially. <laughs> um, here again, here, have your own grab bag of activities. I will give you some websites, great stuff to print out. It'll be wonderful. Uh, leave a note saying how your day went. And Vicki out is going to talk about that a little bit, too. Teachers really appreciate feedback. When we come back and there's nothing there, are you mad? You know, was everything perfect? Leave us a note. Yes, please leave us a note. If there is not enough work, like what you said, that you know the, the work was already done or something. Let us know that way that we can plan better next time. Yeah. And they'll come back. The kids will come back the next day and say, "Where are we good?" They want to know too. <laughs> yeah. They want to know if the naughty ones. Yeah. Well, and, and if they were exceptionally good, tell us that too, and they'll be rewarded. They we to threaten them before you come. <laughs> <laughs> well, when, when I understand about having some uh, extra activities, maybe for them to do, but we don't know. We don't know what class we'll be subbing for. So we don't know what to do there. Right. We don't know how many students are going to be in that class. So how many copies of stuff to make? Yeah. We don't have access. I, you know, I'll get on to this when I talk. But something I do is take brain teasers or my whatever, and it, it doesn't matter what age group it is. It doesn't matter how many are in there. They'll, or you tell a story, or you read a story. It doesn't matter what age group, and they really get into it. Like I'll be, like one time I stood up there and just went. A, you know, this little, kind of like hangman without the hangman, I just would tell me the sequence of this, and they had to guess what letters they were, and some didn't want to do it, they sat there quiet, but they filled in the blank, and it was something as simple as the first letter of each month, and so I had, you know, J, M, M, whatever, you know, whatever the months, and they had to guess, and nobody could guess it, and then just fill that time with just something, it doesn't have to be a computer. And, and, and I understand your concern. That's more of a problem for teachers, though. And I want to address what subs can do. I mean, I, and I shared your letter with the principals, I did, because <laughs> that is a teacher issue. It really is. And I'm sorry that some teachers do not leave you enough stuff. Or five minutes worth of stuff. Or five minutes worth of stuff. And I'm sorry about that. But that's, we're not going to go there. I'm just, we're just trying to help them right now. Yeah, yeah, sure. I understand. I understand. But I'm just saying the grand bag of tricks to have handy. I agree with that. But no computer access for us. Yeah. So, yeah. You're going to have to do it yourself. Yeah, we have you to know, you're going to, it's, it's going to be your responsibility. I know it's not fair. I'm Ingenuity sorry. Sometimes. Janet. Yeah. What? And in turn with that, the subs, all teachers are going to tell you do not let your kids on their uh, cell phones for music or games or anything like that. These kids are like, oh, well, 
We're 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 going to get there. Okay. So the time is wrong. The element, the school times have changed. Okay. Yeah, school times have changed. The element it says up there to be sure and check into the office at all campuses, which is obviously like she had said, 15 minutes prior. The seven at 7:55 it says up here. Actually, the elementary bell is going to ring at 7:50, so the students are going to be released to go to the rooms at 7:50. So they'll. Be, They'll be coming to the classroom at 7.50 in the morning. So obviously you're going to need to be there, you know, 7.30, 7.35. So because they'll be coming and all of our classes start at 8 o'clock at the elementary. Now I know the high school and junior high are going to be different. Obviously they start at 8.45. Um, but that's, but that's when students zero kind of zero hour depends zero on. Hour, but that's also at the high school hour. I don't know how it's going to work at the junior high, but at the high school, that's when all meetings are supposed to take place. FCA, uh, stu well, I don't know, okay. at, at eight, and they, I, that's and, and tutorials at that time. So more than likely, your uh, your beginning time would be eight thirty at the high school. All right. So, yeah, they changed all the stuff. We're we're still we're still getting information to the, t the teachers, the staff. We're still finding new things out. So, yeah, call your secretary. Everyone's secretary is talking to this man. Okay, yeah, check in at your campus, check out. And if you leave, you know, used to in the old days, subs would just go home for lunch. Don't do that anymore. Call, let the secretary know where you're going if you have to go home. If you're going to run to the country store, let somebody know. Okay, next slide. Is this it? Duties. Oh yeah, if your teacher has duties, you have to do those duties for them. So if they have bus duty after school, you have bus duty after school. Check, they should have that in their notes that you can't check in the office just to make sure. Be prepared. Well, if they don't tell you, then that is probably their problem. You might, you know, you might check with, because she has a, a roster of the duties. At the high school, there's a roster for duties. And one thing that was on that previous slide was be prepared to stay all day. We understand that things come up. We understand that, you know, maybe you got a phone call and your kid got sick and you're going to have to leave also. But there was some, uh, several situations last year where it was like, well, I'll be there at 9 o'clock and then I have to leave at 1030 and I have to, I'm going to, you know, I have to run through this. And if, you, and if that's going to be the case, it'd really be better if you just declined that day and not, and not did, and not, you know, not come or not commit to that day. Um, and we do understand that, you know, you have, some of you have children too in our, in schools here and those kind of things, and you may get the phone call and, and we'll deal with that on an individual basis. But if you take a job, you know, you need to plan to stay for the day. This has really been reiterated to us again this year, to us, and, and we're passing this on to you guys. Um, phones are, and this is from the school board, phones are not to be used during the school day, especially during instructional time. That means us, and that means you, and that means the students. We know there's all extenuating circumstances, but in the summer, I find myself checking my phone constantly when I don't even need to. We are such creatures of habit, we have become tied to it. But um, the instance that was brought up to us was that um, school board members walked into classrooms last year and there were teachers sitting at the desk with their head bowed, looking at their phones, not aware of anything going on in the classroom, and um, they didn't like it. They didn't like it at all. And um, one was a teacher and one was a sub. So, again, they reiterated to us during the school day, you know, you get a phone call, you get a text, check it, put it back down. But don't sit there on your phone, please, because they, you're setting an example for those kids. And we fought that battle on a daily basis. And we were told again, kids are not allowed while on their phones during the school day. No matter what they in tell you. In the building. That's what we were told. So when they walk in at 8 o'clock in the morning, even though school hasn't begun, they can't have it. After school, they can't have it in the building. The, the, the phone, the, the earbuds, all of that. So help us out. And we know that it causes issues. We know that you will have students that you'll say, you know, give me your phone. No. We know that's going to happen. You've got to be stronger than them. 
We are still the adults. We are still the professionals. Call somebody. Call the teacher across the hall. Don't let them, don't let them just put it in their pocket that they got involved with it. But again, also have common sense. If you see it in their pocket, don't take it from them. If it drops out on the floor and it just drops out on the floor, put it up. If it, even if it rings and they're like, and you can see the shock look on their face, they didn't know it was going to ring or go off. Use common sense with dealing with them because the same things happen to us. And you know, we don't, we're not, we're not playing gotcha. Our job is not to play gotcha. Our, our job is to educate and to, to instruct these kids on a daily basis, not to play gotcha. So again, they're not supposed to have it. We're not supposed to have it, but common sense, okay? Um, Yes, you may confiscate yeah, the phones. If they're out and they're using them, use common sense. Use common sense. Do they have to renew them for 15 bucks? Yes. So and that $15 pays for our coffee and the <laughs> work room. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, 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 yes, On a day that a sub is there, no, they shouldn't. They shouldn't. Um, we, they were told that if class, that the phones were needed in the classroom during instructional time, they have to get special permission from the principals. And they should never do that with the sub. They should not leave that kind of responsibility with you guys. So what so, do we do with the phones? Um, I wouldn't, I would never send the kid to the office with the phone. Because <laughs> they, they'll never make it. Um, I would, Take a sticky note, wrap it, put a name on it, and either, you know, um, as soon as you can, get it to the office. That's that's my best advice. I wouldn't leave it unlocked anywhere in the And I wouldn't hold on to it. No, no. And, and those situations have happened. So be very careful if you do take up a phone. Again, that's a big responsibility, but it's something that we have to do. Um, be very careful what you post on Facebook, um, that we are a small community. Um, be very careful when we all get upset and we have a tendency to post things. What you say in haste has long-term effects. It's in print, it doesn't go away. Uh, if you put it there for the world to see, the world sees it. And um, it might be about a coworker, it, and you might not even mention names, but anytime you reference the school, people take note and people jump all over it. You, you, you see it online all the time. Uh, so just be very careful about the information that you post on Facebook. We can't tell you not to post on Facebook. We can just tell you to be very careful, but we can tell you that you don't need to be posting during the school day. Or if you're here eight to four, you don't need to sit in class and post on Facebook. And um, again, try not to take photos of students. No, don't. Do not. <laughs> do, not. Yeah, do not take photos, and especially post them. Just, that is a confidentiality. That is a, oh, a biggie. Just don't take photos of kids and post them on your Twitter or your Instagram. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm pretty good. Don't even miss me calling me. Ever. Yeah. Even first name. Yes. When, I know that it's kind of very hard not to, but if you're at parties and your kids are being, try to be very cautious and not to take pictures of other kids in that situation as well. I personally don't would want somebody taking a picture of my child without me knowing it and posting it on Facebook. Exactly. So I, I don't know who they're friends. That's why it's so important. Well, as a parent, yeah, not as a parent, yeah. in general. In general, you're right. And, and we do, we forget things that we do at the moment, and we don't think of our long term effects sometimes. So just be very, very careful about how you use social media. And um, again, we, 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 we hate that we even have to bring this up, but. Make sure that you keep all relationships with children professional. You really, unless it's your own child, you really don't need their phone numbers, text, you know, you don't need to be communicating with them. And they'll ask you, they'll ask you for your phone number and they'll ask to be your friends on Facebook. Just make sure that it is, that you keep it purely professional. So that's my fun thing to talk about. Be careful about hugging. And they wrap housing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then quit doing it. Um, just, but, yes, go ahead. Sorry. You're okay. Like in the elementary.
tree, you say no hugging it. And I get it for high school and all of that. But kids in elementary are very Use uh, your best judgment. I taught sure. kindergarten and second grade for and 20 those babies years. Sometimes it was they do. I, they do. I mean, my baby, grade. I have three babies in elementary. Yeah. yeah. In fifth grade, they you know. Just be, be, just be careful. careful. Like your and way. never, here's, okay. a, here's a good one never be in a room with a student by yourself Ever. with the door closed, Ever. no matter what age they are. Always have somebody there. Always let somebody see you. In this day and age, you don't ever want to put yourself in a scary situation where you are alone with a student. And ever. if they come in, and they will, can I talk to you for a minute after class? Say, sure, let's step out in the hall. But do not get yourself in that situation. Boy or girl. Boy or girl. Absolutely. Um, dress code. Please dress professionally. As you can see, we have on <laughs> our, you know, capris, flip-flops, but we have on blouses. Our hair is done. You don't have to dress to the nines in Greenwood. That's one of the joys of working here, but you need to look better than the kids. <laughs> Do not wear yoga pants. Do not wear leggings. Those are against the dress code for students, and you should not wear them either. <laughs> no spaghetti straps. I mean, and, and you're going to have to use your best judgment here, too. The one little girl last year was wearing those pajama jeans, and you could see every crevice. <laughs> and, and she was like, these are jeans. And, and they sent her home. You just use your, if it looks gross, send them home. <laughs> if they've got holes in their jeans, send them home. And that does happen a lot. <clears throat> As a sub, you, you look, I can't believe she's, I can't believe she's wearing that today. If, if, it, if you know that she's out of dress code or he's out of dress code, you don't even have to do it. Send a text to a principal, send a text to somebody, go ask the teacher across the hall, hey, will you come look at the student? But a lot of times, fifth and sixth period, we'll get a student completely out of dress code. And uh, and I'll ask, who did you have? And I'll go, we'll go through first, second, third period. And they've had subs all morning. And and I, I don't think that you are ignoring it. I think that you don't want to cause confrontation. And it does cause confrontation, sadly. But we have to get them, especially at the beginning of the year, to understand that we're going to follow the dress code. It's the same dress code. They tweaked it a little bit. The pajama, the bandana pants, I'm not even sure what that means. But, um, <laughs> I'm out of the They look like, they look like, um, oh, I know which one. They're, they're like, like drawstring, the GD pants, like, kind of, but they're drawstring cotton pants. And somewhere in it, and but the, the dress code is not posted yet because I looked yesterday and it's still last year's dress code. So before you take your first assignment, you get online and you go to the website and you go to the student code. And if it, it, right now it's on page 29, but that's the dress code. And we have to follow it also. And it, it's not extremely strict, I promise you. But we do need to look better than the kids. So on, on the same side as that, kind of like four, we don't need to see them wearing bigger clothes. No, no, sagging, no. Sagging pants, sagging pants. <laughs> if they're having to walk down the hall holding their pants up, they send them to the send office. Them to the we'll office. Them the and you don't have to deal with dress code. You just send them to the office. But the thing is, if you send them to the office, make sure they go. Because they will go and go to the bathroom and hide out for 10 minutes and come back and say, oh, they said I was okay. Yeah. If that if that happens, tell them, I need a note. I need a note from the office that says they're okay. Yep. Are y'all saying that like the Palooza pants? We... Anybody have any, any of those? Somebody had one because they're really cute. Come right here. I don't understand the problem. I don't think those are that's there. Not, no, those I don't are think that's what they're no, talking about. No. These are, like, if you stand in the light, you can kind of see through them. They're not that. Yeah, see now. I don't think that's what they're talking about. I think those are cute. Go home. But the material is different. It's that. They said it like Jamaican pants or whatever. See through or something. They're probably gauzy. Oh, I know what you're talking about. When you're in the light, you can, you can see the silhouette. Why don't you guys well, do it? if you have a question, send them to the office. Thank you. Okay, any questions about dress code for you or for the kids? On the left, I know on the elementary, it says as long as the whatever the on top of the 
Leggings, this probably because four inches, four inches, four inches yeah. above the knee. Four inches above the knee. Even this long top would be. So, it, and it is hard to find. But if as long as the leggings, your bottom is covered. As, as long as your leggings, leg, yeah, as long as your shirt or your top or your tunic or your dress is four inches above the knee, you're fine. Okay. Leggings would be considered like clothes. Yeah. So, if you wouldn't wear your dress, that's your clothes. But, yeah. Yes.
um, in the hallways. You know, a teacher may be in, in the hallway with a student, um, and there may be a situation, and you walk by, and you hear a little snippet of what's going on, and you put, you know, and it's like, oh, I didn't like the way that that was said, or, or you know, you, did, you may have just overheard part of it. Please remember you don't know the entire context of that situation. And if you interpret it incorrectly, and like she said, if you happen to know that student or you know somebody who's kin to that student, you go and you're like, and you say something about what the teacher said or how the teacher was handling it, it's it's really hard. No, I mean, you, you know, when you hear certain things, you're like, wait, maybe I don't like that. But just remember, you don't know what what got to how it got to that point and how it, in the context of the whole situation. So just be real careful about those kinds of things also and passing that information along to other people because again confidentiality is a big thing. We pretty much talked about that. All way active monitoring that we're talking about that. Oh all way all active monitoring. Yes. Uh, between classes, especially at the junior high school level. Um, it's, it's chaotic between class periods, and the more bodies, the more eyes out there, the less likely that things are going to happen. And if you're out there, you don't have to even say anything, just your presence. It's like when they parked the, the DPS at the four-way the other day. Just, <laughs> just yes, actively, it was, it was funny, it, but it, a lot of people said, oh, I didn't know anybody wasn't in there. Just your, your presence alone makes a big difference. So it, just make sure, and sometimes there's there's reasons for whatever that you can't get out in the hall, but between hallways, between classes, please be out in the hallway actively, you know, looking around, talking, you know, but, and you don't have to yell or scream at anybody, but just be there. Um, sure. Um, and the one that says not to punish the entire class, there were several situations last year, I know with our, just our specific grade level, where the sub was like, well, I couldn't tell who was talking, so I just made, I, I just made them all clip or I just made them all stand. Well, that turns into a really big deal when it goes home because you know, and you probably even have some of them in your own home, who it devastates some of those students who truly were not a part of the problem. So please try to stay away from the entire class punishment. We know it's hard, we know you don't know these students, but tr please try to figure out who the problem is and not do a blanket punishment because it does, you know, Students, first of all, are very upset. The, uh, the day it happened, we had, I can't tell you how many students outside just boo-hooing because they were in trouble and they've never been in trouble and they were going to be in trouble at home. You know, you have them at, some of you have them at your own homes and they're your own children. So be very careful about blanket entire class punishment because it does cause an issue not only with the student, it causes an issue when they go home and tell their parents. And in turn, it causes an issue for the student when the parent's upset the next day. <laughs> So be very careful about the blanket punishment. And don't hold them after class. Do not, you know, if you've got somebody, do not hold the, the entire class after. Because we have a very strict tardy policy this year. After four, they're on a no-fly list and, and ISS on the fifth. And um, it'll affect those kids. So if you can figure it out, leave, or if nothing else, leave a note. Leave just a detailed note for the teacher for the next day. Unless it's something bad enough that somebody needs to go to the office. Can I give you a little hint for little kids? If they're talking and you can't figure out who it is, just say, point to the talker. Oh, they'll do that at high school. Any yeah. age. Really? Yeah. Well, it works. Are you looking at the high schooler to tell the other one We'll just point. We'll just do the head thing. Yeah. You need yeah. to hush. Yeah. yeah. Um, this one is a biggie, too. Please do not leave your classroom unattended. If you need to run to the restroom, it all happens to us. We find at the end of the day sometimes we don't even go to the bathroom and it's 3.40 and we've gone all day. Just run across the hall, snag a teacher in the hall, say watch my class a second, I gotta do this. But do not walk out and leave the classroom unattended. That's when things happen and I've seen it happen over and over again at the high school, it happens at the elementary. And it's usually simple things like kid slipped and fell and hit his head. I've, I've heard and the teacher was nowhere to be found. So please, if there's kids, there, there has to be monitoring. You have to be do not leave them on the Use the staff restroom. Sir? Use the staff restroom. Use whatever restroom you use for an activity. Yeah, well, well that can end up in the back. It can be a shoe, job issue. Oh, oh gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yes. Yeah. 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 And I understand. You know, it's a child issue. Yeah. Sometimes we have to use the closest yeah. one because I'm 45. And <laughs> that happens. Yeah. Yeah. Um,
we'll all talk about special needs kids because of confidentiality and since you're going to sign a waiver, hopefully you will know who your special needs children are. But just because they're not labeled special needs does not mean that they don't have special needs. You need to pick your battles with these kids. Some of them really can't read. Some of them really can't do the work. And some of them need the opportunity to stay in the classroom and not be sent immediately to the study shack. It, it, those of you in elementary, the study shack is where special needs kids can go and get some extra help. Don't immediately send them out of the room just because you don't want to deal with them. That's heartbreaking to them. Let them try. Give them a chance. If, and especially if they ask you, may I go to the study shack, you betcha. But, don't call them out. Yeah, don't call them out. Don't. don't call them out. Yeah. But I would have them attempt it first because I know this is one thing they talked to, that she asked me to mention. Because a lot of times they're like, oh, a sensor, can I go to the study shack? And they're like, they, they won't even attempt. I would have them attempt first. And if you can tell they're struggling or they, they are not understanding or they're having a problem with that, absolutely send them. If you don't know, send them. This is one thing that she asked me to mention also that um, don't, don't send them automatically. But at the same she, she, and it's hard to know. But oftentimes, um, the Ms. McDaniel is the teacher that does the study shack on the uh, third through fifth end of it fifth grade end of the building and um, she says if she comes and talks to you she will leave her cell phone number generally and if she comes and talks to you there's obviously a reason she's coming to talk to you she says she's given people her number before and then they're like oh we have this issue and I didn't know what to do well then she's leaving your her number for a reason so make sure you if she comes and talks to you make sure that you you know give her a give her a call uh, go uh, you know send that student send a note with the student but make sure you go ahead and do that but she wanted to make also make you aware that you're obviously working with this with students with a wide range of um, abilities and she said you know if you're going to have to be very um you're going to have to adapt very quickly in, in those situations that their schedule changes quickly there's going to be things that come up that they that you have to go help with and she said she wanted me to let you know that absolutely she would love anybody to come and you know step in and do that but if it's something that it's not for if you feel like it's not for you just please you know don't take those uh, uh, she said to let the office know but now with it coming up on the on the uh, computer on that site if that's something that you truly don't you don't enjoy doing then just please don't take those jobs because it does take somebody who's very you know willing to jump in there and work with a wide range of students as well as going nine million different places in a very short amount of time yes there are study shack slips that every teacher again they, those should be in their in their pink folders um, if not, the students generally know where they are, the, the students that are going there. But she does ask that you put their name, what subject they're coming, what time they came, so she can document that they've come down. And when, when she sends it back, she'll have signed off on it. Yes. times where there was no sub assigned to a classroom and the classroom sat through the whole time you know and, and nobody knew but we can't fix it if we don't know so it, I know you don't, don't want to offend anybody but sometimes you have to tell okay this now we're going to do a little bit specific because we are so different but I, it's stuff that we've already touched on but I just want you know again the cell phone use be really on top of it this year and it, it's going to be an issue especially at the beginning and we know it is but if we all work together and we, and we all follow, it, it should, we'll have it solved easily if we're consistent. And it's all about consistency with these kids. Um, 
Kids wandering the halls is always an issue at the house when they are masters at it. Um, they're not supposed to leave the classroom without a pass, ever. Um, one kid per pass. Don't write five passes and let five kids out of the classroom because they are just trying to get out of class. If there's nothing for them to do, that's another issue, but don't let them out of class. And if, if they're not busy, they're going to get in trouble, and they're gonna get in trouble either in your class or out. I mean, so th that's that's one of the problems, and we know it is. Will there be a, will there be a consistency in what these hall passes look like? I mean, I've seen clipboards, I've seen things go to the ball attached to them. Well, I, <laughs> yes, we will work in the world. They get lost and stolen, but usually at the beginning of the year, there is a consistent hall pass. It just somehow <coughs> loses its way. So we will work at, at getting consistent hall passes. Um, please, if a student says, I need to go talk to so-and-so in another classroom, don't let them, ever. That is disrupting someone else's classroom time. Um, and they will do that. And they'll say, oh, I need to go talk to so-and-so. Don't let them go talk to another teacher if you're disrupting their instruction time. Um, Another biggie with high schools. Yes. That is their tutorial time. That is their tutorial time before school. Yes. Another thing that's biggie with high school. High school kids like to, to shock you, and they like to say things and do things to shock you just to see your reaction. Um, and they will carry on conversations that are totally inappropriate just to see what you'll do. See if you're listening. Uh, it's your job as an adult and as a professional to nip it in the bud. They don't need to be talking about their plans that they had last week and the parties they attended and the illegal drugs they supposedly, you know. Just remember that you're the adult, you're the professional, and if there is inappropriate talk, if they're bashing another teacher, if they're bashing another student, please nip it in the and say that we don't need to talk about that here. That is just not classroom appropriate talk. And some will try you anyway, but, um, you are, you're in charge. You get to be in charge, and you get to tell them. And if there's an issue, deal with it that way. Um, we throw you guys into situations every day that are crazy, and we know we do. And you come in not knowing, ask for help. Ask somebody, find somebody in the hall, call Paula, call Rhonda, call anybody in the office, and we'll be glad to help you, because we know we throw you into chaotic situations. That's the way high school is. So let us help you. Yes? Uh, usually, well, there's phones in the, in the classrooms now, once we get them all straight. But if you'll just say, hey, can I have your number, we'll give you our phone number. And, you know, text us. Text Ted or text Jones. They don't mind. Well, they do mind, but they'll do it anyway. <laughs> so Try Ted first. Try Ted first. You'll get a quicker response. Yes, he will respond. Yes. 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 seating chart but in my classroom for example if you've ever sat in my classroom my seating changes about every three days because of my grouping so seating charts not going to do anybody any good in the elementary school they have those little name plates this is just a suggestion this is what I did when I sat in sixth grade for nine months before I got a job I just had everybody get out a piece of paper put their name on it they're gonna lie I'm, so, I'm not gonna Lottie, they're going to put some other, they're going to put Eating. Gandalf, they're going to put Dumbledore, whatever, <laughs> but they'll tell on each other. Just have them put their name on a piece of paper and put it on their desk. It's better than nothing when you don't have a seating chart. 
Yes, we'd like for every teacher to have a seating chart. And you know, in a perfect world, they would. But until we have a directive from administration, every teacher's not going to. Copy, go make another copy real right quick. And then you have a copy to keep and one to turn in. And then at least you have the names. They might try to do yeah, the switcher room. Yeah. 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 With notes. Yeah. Yes. But if you're doing four or five different classes, exactly. you can't do 15 if That's one of those things. Yeah. All you have to do in that case of taking attendance is Marco Madison. If they're not sitting in class, either, they call <laughs> Marco Madison. Well, yeah, we have to group that in the computer, so they're absent. My dad calls. I tell them I have a seating okay. chart. <laughs> and, then, and then when they say, well, we don't have a seating chart, I said, just for me, they wrote yeah. a seating chart. So okay, we're going to go on because we've only got 15 more minutes. We don't want to keep y'all over, and I want Vicki to have a chance to talk. In the middle school, specific, check in the office with Misty. Ask, and this, I would say this for everything, ask if there's anything going on today. Is there a pep rally today? Are we, having a, are we having a fire drill today? Because, you know, if we're making plans for three days in advance that we're going to be gone, we that's something that teachers, we don't think of everything. We really don't. So it would behoove you as a sub to ask if there was anything crazy going on. Has the schedule changed? We, sixth grade, we are out in the portables. If you have subbed out in the portables, you know it is chaos. In between classes, the kids are just, ah, they're running around free. That's when you need to be out there. If you're subbing in the portables, you need to be walking down that ramp with those kids and standing out there monitoring. It's very important. If you're out there in the portables, you do not have a phone. This is your phone. Your phone is your phone. Leave your phone number at the office so they can get a hold of you. Okay? Huh? Yeah, or if you need the office. And this is one of those, you know you're not supposed to have your phone out. Well, guess what? And sixth grade teachers get to. Because that's that's our communication. And if it's it, like if it's dealing with school related issues, of course you need to. Yes, of course. Yeah, we're not saying you can't use your phone. Yeah. And they'll call you, you know, we need so and so at the office. I don't know right now because it's new. They're all new. They all have new numbers. I'm telling you, we're, we're doing this. We're doing this too. The middle They'll school, post them. The middle school's number is 253 6696. They'll post it on the website. They'll post it on the website. Um, <coughs> blah, blah, blah. Okay, I think I said all that. All right. All right. It's taking forever. It's just, all right, I, I, we've actually covered most of this up here. Um, the big thing is, is like we said, the confidentiality and ask if you need something. We appreciate what you do. We need you. We want you to be there. We want to help you. If you have a question, please find somebody to ask. One thing that wasn't covered for the little kids, for the little kids, uh, we have snacks and we keep them back in our kitchens usually. Don't let a child just go back there and get snack. We can't see them, and we only do it once a day. We've had it before where they'll let them get snack in the morning and then the snack in the afternoon, and then we don't have enough snacks. And they steal them because my son just always snacks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't remember that. Oh, that's funny. I don't remember that. Actually, some of the elder kids do also, but it's usually not. I mean, they bring their own snack, and they have a, they, I mean, ours is like second period. They bring it, they have their snack, and it's not an issue. They just eat it when they decide they want it. And one, if you, if too much information, I know, but at the high school, no outside food or drinks. No outside food or drinks. Clear water bottles only, and I even have a problem with that, but no outside food or drinks. Okay. I hope you have a About what? because I'm going to give you some websites that I want you to check out. 
This was too, yes, no flawless. We have no flawless in Junior High High School. Kids they cannot leave the room. Uh, the, the, the classroom. For ever. any reason. Under any circumstances. And it'll start with the tardies. And if they yeah. go, go to ISS or AP, that's how they get put on it. Or if they're just wonders, because we have those that are good kids, they just managed to get out of class. Yeah. And they will have a printed out list. Yeah. They'll have a list for you, and that should be in a pink color. This is an excellent book. I bought this off of Amazon.com for a penny. It cost me $3 to ship it. So I have an excellent resource for $3.01. It's called Substitute Teaching A to Z. And it's by Barbara Pressman. She's written lots of books about subbing and classroom organization and classroom discipline. Substitute Teaching A to Z dot com. Substitute Teaching A to Z dot com is her website. Her name is Barbara Pressman. On, her, on that website, substituteteachingatoz.com, there is a list of about 24 websites for substitute teachers. They have things you can print out, games you can play that don't cost any money, kind of what uh, Mickey's going to talk about. This is the, the Substitute Te Teaching Institute workbook. This is Utah State, of all places. Created curriculum, college curriculum for substitute teachers. The online course costs $39, which is a pretty cheap investment for a whole lot of information. This is another book I got online for a penny. $3 shipping. It's uh, from Utah State University, and it is Substitute Teaching Institute. Great, and, and again, lots of printouts, all kinds of grade level things just right on hand. This would go in your bag of tricks and be awesome. So look at that. Uh, the substitute teaching .com has that college course on there. It's the first thing. It's sped, not it's sped. I'll find it. Anyway, okay. Uh, the last thing, if you're not on the Remind accounts, um, there was a web. I think it's, it will be on the website. Get on and get those remind accounts. It's nice to see, and you might get too many because sometimes Mr. Lee gets a little text happy, but, <laughs> but it, it's pertinent information. Sometimes I don't even know what's going on and I'm up here. So uh, the remind accounts at the high school, the junior high, all principals have one and, and it's updated. So if you don't have that, you might really want to make sure that you have those. So, yes. that because everybody. everybody would know it so no there won't be anything like that um, somebody will take care of you if that's a week you know if, if that happens um, the person across the hall will say hey close your door and lock it um, safety measures like that change often I'm not sure because we haven't gone through our teacher training for helping them in school procedure we don't even know what it is yet so keep asking and that's my best advice on that. So, any other questions? I know it's a lot of information, but we appreciate you. You have no idea how much okay. we appreciate you. We're going to let Vicki talk. She's going to talk to you as a professional. So. Okay, most of the stuff <laughs> that I'm going to say has already been kind of hit on, but let me first say that I'm excited. I have a microphone and audience, a stage. <laughs> Okay. okay, okay, let me tell you about my first day, my very first day of subbing. Like they said, you go in there, they take a lot of it, and they say, they they think you just know. I went in there, I walked into the classroom, there was a roll sheet. I didn't, the roll sheets are different now, but I thought, okay, I guess I just checked this. I didn't know you're supposed to use a red pen, a highlighter, sign it, whatever. That, I looked at the teacher's notes, handed out the worksheet, they were doing the worksheet, they started talking, how, don't you have kids? Don't, you know, that start got me off track. I, I didn't want to be rude, so I started talking about my kids. <laughs> They're like doing the worksheet as a group thing. It wasn't supposed to be a group thing. We were laughing. I was having a good old time. I was having the best day. The teacher comes in and goes, excuse me, but you're being too loud. I'm like, I'm sorry, it's my fault. 
you know, but when I left there, I was like, that was great. I can't wait to come back. I was surprised that they even let me come back, but I had no control, none. Those kids controlled that classroom, and that would never happen now, ever. So make sure uh, that doesn't happen to you. But the whole the whole time I kept saying, well, I didn't know, well, I didn't know. And that's the number one excuse substitutes give is, well, I didn't know. Well, that's what this whole training is for. It's not to scare you, it's not to overwhelm you. It's just to kind of help you get guidelines on how and what to do and don't, the, my, I give the credit to communication, talking to other teachers, talking to the office staff, talking to the principals, and common sense. Common sense is so important. Um, uh, let's see. I'm just trying not to follow the teacher's notes. That's so, so important. If you think about it, teachers teach every single day. It's a second nature. They're not going to remember to write down every little thing because they just do it out of habit. They, everything changes every day and they just do it. So be sure to tell that teacher uh, if you come up with a problem or you need something, ask that teacher. Don't be afraid to talk to the other teachers at all. Like they already expressed, the number one thing kids will say, we've already done this. And then they find out, oh, it was a worksheet that looked like that. Or I just make them do it again. I say, fine, well, we're going to do it again. Just because half the time, nine out of ten times, they haven't done it. They just think they did. Or they're trying to get away away with it. Um, dress professionally. No one wants to see your chop dress. They, they've already <laughs> gone over that talk about it. Attitude's important. If you walk into the classroom and you, uh, you're lazy, <laughs> unprepared, unprofessional, and you just sit at the desk on your phone or do whatever, that's what you're going to get out of the kids. If you get up, walk around, interact, then they're going to be more on task, more involved. They've already kind of expressed that. Um, you may run into that one student that doesn't want to work. What? Don't make it a power struggle. Don't have a power struggle. Sometimes, I mean, you can take that student if they're disruptive, put them in the hall, send them to the office, do what you have to do. The other thing is that sometimes it's that one person that's just lazy. Well, ask them to work. If they're not disruptive, just ignore it. Most of the times, that's the same student that the teacher has problems with, and they do the same thing for the for the teacher. Just you know, choose your battles. Don't make a big deal out of it. And the other thing that I want to hit is if you, if a kid does get in trouble, and let's say you do send them in the hall or the office, don't come back in and ask one of the students, does the teacher have problems with that? What's wrong with that student today? Don't even discuss any of that with the students. That's just between that student and whoever, the administration, the teacher, and don't ever Threaten something and not follow through. Don't say, I'm going to send you to the office. I'm going to make a note because the, the students pick that up and they say, oh, yeah, she always says she's going to write a note or send us to the office and then she never does. So follow through. Always pick your battles wisely. Don't sweat the small stuff. There's small stuff. Don't sweat it. Just, you know, uh, that's. <laughs> um, let's see. What else do we have here? Oh, yeah. The phone thing, I just always say no. If I don't know, I say no. Later on, I'll find out. Can we listen to music? The teacher always lets us listen to music. If I don't know, it's not in the notes, I say no. Don't be afraid to say no. And then later, I'll find out from the teacher. She'll go, oh, yeah, I didn't put that in the notes. We'll tell the teacher. Write it down. Leave notes. Leave notes for the teacher. That's really, really important. Follow the lesson plan. Um, my, If, if, uh, a, t if a student is misbehaving don't hesitate take them to the office don't take mis misbehave uh, behavior personally um, don't engage in power struggles don't escalate the situation don't sweat the small stuff kids all the time ask me why my hair is big why is your hair so big I just tell them I'm closer to heaven that way so uh, don't you know don't take it personally they're gonna try to do anything to distract you to get off the lesson plan they're gonna ask questions that it'll follow through on any warning consequences. Um, so, oh, leave a note, oh, seating charts, I'm a big one on the seating charts. I tell them sometimes I have a seating chart and, the, and I tell them if you do have a seating chart, I say, I check and roll by the seating chart, you better get where you're supposed to and you'd be surprised how many kids get up and move. They try to get away with it. So. Um, they're, and they're always surprised when you call them by name. So if yeah. you can find out what their names are, do that. They, they said the thing about don't take pictures. I've had students take pictures 
or ask me to take their picture, please, especially on free days or whatever, don't do it. Just don't do it. Don't post anything you want with your kids. Main things are dress professionally, be professional, uh, be there early, be confident, follow the lesson plan. No group work means no group work. If they say independent, it's independent. If they say, can we work in partners? She always lets us work in partners. Don't do it. No group work means no do, no group work. Interact, walk around, don't lose control, don't lose your cool, don't sweat the small stuff. You're there to do a job. Be flexible. Here's another thing I want to hit on. You're paid for the whole day. There's going to be times that they're going to ask you on your off period to cover another class. You're paid for the whole day. Do them a favor, cover the class. It's, it, you know, you may not have had an off period. The only time you had was lunch, but they need you to cover that class. Just cover the class. You're paid for the whole day. You're there. Just do it. Be flexible when it comes to that. They're going to ask you to do stuff like that, and you're just going to have to do that. Leave a teacher's note, good or bad. We all make mistakes. Learn from our mistakes. No one's perfect. Um, you're going to have bad days from time to time, but I'm going to tell you the good days are so much better. Than, am I boring? The good days are so much better than the bad days, and you'll have a whole lot more. Subs are greatly appreciated. They appreciate you. You may have a day where you don't feel appreciated. You don't feel like the kids did anything, but I guarantee they do appreciate you, yeah. and uh, they can't say it enough. So I just kind of breeze through that, and I'm nervous. So that's good. Thank you. What? There are three papers up here that. They want you to sign. Oh, on the dress code, if you have to do PE or be a coach, they don't care if you wear jeans and a t-shirt, tennis shoes, but, but you know, there again, that goes with common sense. Nobody's asking you to go buy a whole new wardrobe, but just look for example. Yes. There's one. There's three papers up here. One of these is the confidentiality. It's what it is, is it's saying you've read a copy of a handbook and you need to check. If you have, if you want a copy of the handbook, or if you're going to read it online, that's your confidentiality. That's what the teachers sign. That's what you're going to sign. That's your confidentiality. There's ASOP stuff and pay dates. Three papers up there. And because you sat here so long and did such a wonderful job, you are all invited to eat barbecue with us in the cafeteria. Please stay. Please stay and eat at noon in the cafeteria. Y'all can even go first because we appreciate y'all so much. But please come get these three papers. Have them filled out. If you can't fill them out here and you need to go ahead and go, you've got to take those by the administration office and get them in your folder before they'll let you sign. Just the one needs to be turned back in. Yeah, just the, just the confidentiality paper needs to be turned back in. Thank y'all very much. Thank you.